Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry it has taken me so long to get this up and running. Um, it's better late than never though, I always say. So we'll get started on this so get you guys can get ready on, for your test coming up soon. Um, we are, again, we're dealing with the cell cycle. Keep The key thing to remember about the cell cycle is that um, the results are always going to be two genetically identical daughter cells. And not only are they identical to each other, but they're identical to their original parent cell. It's very important that that happens. Uh, some of the key terms that we've learned in this chapter, remember the gene, all the DNA that's contained in your cells is called your genome. And all that DNA is packaged into chromosomes. The, um, those two types of cells that we learned about, somatic cells, are all of your body cells except your sex cells. So all of your cells, like your muscle cells, your liver cells, all those are your somatic cells. And then your your gametes are your sex cells. Those are your, for females, that's your eggs, and males, your sperm. And a key thing to remember is those uh, gametes are going to contain half as many chromosomes um, as the somatic cells will have. And we'll learn more about that in the next chapter. <clears throat> so the cell cycle itself consists of interphase and mitosis so and um, <coughs> if you remember that the uh, interphase has three parts to it the G1 phase the S phase and that's where your uh, the DNA makes a copy of itself DNA synthesis takes place and then the G2 phase and then right after the G2 phase you're going to hit mitosis sometimes it's called the mitotic phase and that's also cytokinesis is included in that and then your two new cells will be begin G1 phase of interphase and let's move on here. The mitotic spindle, if you remember, we've talked about this, consists of microtubules, and it uh, plays a very important role in mitosis. It, um, the, they grow out of the centrosome. The centrosomes are the little structures that contain these two little, these two little, the two little structures inside them are called centrioles, and those spindles grow out of the centrosomes and they kind of grow toward each other and remember they'll grow out and they'll grab a hold of a chromosome and attach on and um, then they, they play a major role in separating those chromosomes from each other. Uh, the spindle fibers when they grow out uh, from those centrioles they will then attach to uh, the sister chromatids because remember after the chromosome makes a copy of itself we then call them sister chromatids. They're two identical sister chromatids and so the spindle fibers will attach to the kinetochores at the uh, central mirror and that's a little uh, spot that kind of connects the two sister chromatids together but it's called a kinetochore is where they actually attach onto that central mirror. Don't get those terms central mirror, centriole, centrosol, um, centrosome, excuse me, those those terms are easily get mixed up so be careful you might want to make sure you double check uh, the meanings of all those. So let's jump into mitosis here and uh, go into the different phases. Remember, the first phase of mitosis is prophase. The chromatin is going to start to condense into chromosomes. Again, it's important that it does that because it's kind of hard. It makes it a lot easier and more efficient for those chromosomes to get separated properly and equal amounts going to two new cells if they actually are contained into structures like chromosomes. Um, before they're in the chromosomes, they are in that chromatin, which is just like a blade of spaghetti. The centrosomes are going to start to move away from each other, and the spindle is going to start to grow out of them uh, toward each other. So you can kind of see that in this picture here. Um, the centrosome starting to uh, go towards the opposite end of the poles, and um, the spindle fiber starting to grow out of it. And you can start to see some of the chromosomes appear. The second one, prometaphase, uh, we talked about it, how it's kind of a new thing. It's um, Kind of hard to distinguish it, I think, between prophase and prometaphase. But some of the some of the details of it, your envelope, nuclear envelope is going to start to break up a little bit more. Start to kind of um, break the microtubule tubules are actually going to attach to the kinetic cores, and um, and then some of those microtubules that aren't attached to the kinetic cores, they will start to interact with the microtubules from the opposite end, and they kind of work push each other apart to kind of make it uh, the cell grow a little bit bigger and uh, make those uh, centrosomes farther apart from each other I guess you'd say. But uh, that's the key thing. The chromosomes are going to attach to the the, micro, the spindles and the sister chromatids I should say. 
and um, that nuclear envelope is going to start to break down. And if you see in this picture here, the uh, you can kind of see it. I like this picture. You can kind of see that the nuclear envelope is starting to break down a little bit, and uh, they're attaching. They're not completely lined up in the middle yet. No, so they're not lined up in the middle, but they are starting to attach to the spindle fibers. And uh, there's your non-kinetic core microtubules kind of interacting together, pushing each other apart. The next phase, metaphase, is the longest phase of mitosis. Let me back up there just a second. The longest phase of mitosis, not the cell cycle, but of mitosis. And the chromosomes, again, it's really easy to recognize. The chromosomes are going to line up in the middle of it along that metaphase plate. And um, that is a key feature of metaphase. And there you can see in this picture here that they're lining up in the middle and they're still in the form of sister chromatids. So there's one central mirror and two sister chromatids for each one of these uh, chromosomes here, I guess you could say. And um, again, this is metaphase. The next one is anaphase. It's the shortest phase of all of the mitotic cycle. And during this one, it's real simple, the anaphase, that the sister chromatids actually pu get pulled apart. They separate from each other. So that's an easy way to remember it, anaphase apart. And, um, and from when, they, when they separate from each other, they're no longer sister chromatids. They are actually full-fledged chromosomes. And that cell's going to start to elongate a little bit more uh, because it's about to become two new cells. So you can kind of see there in this picture here that those those uh, those chromosomes are, they don't, notice they call them daughter chromosomes here, not sister chromatids, but these daughter chromosomes, because they are chromosomes now, they're getting pulled apart from each other. And they're also kind of, remember that we talked about how they're kind of walking along these spindle fibers as well. As they're, sh as they're shortening, they're also kind of walking along those, by getting caught, carried by motor proteins. Uh, the last phase, telophase. Two, some key features to have two daughter nuclei begin to form. So now those chromosomes are going to start to kind of get closer together. Now that, because they're getting pulled apart, they're getting closer together. Nuclear envelope is going to start to form around both of them. And the chromosomes are going to become less condensed, starting to become that whole um, chromatin again. And so it's kind of just the opposite of prometaphase. It's kind of the way I like to look at it. And a um, key feature with plant cells, if you remember the plant cells, that cell plate is that little precursor to the cell wall. It's going to start to form between the two uh, new nuclei. And uh, in animals, though, instead of having a cell plate, remember that, um, that uh, m the plasma membrane will start to pinch in, and it's called a cleavage furrow, and we'll talk about that. Well, you, we've talked about that in class. and. Uh, so that's the key thing. It starts to pinch in. Eventually it will close off and separate those two cells. And there you can see in this picture here, there's the kind of the, uh, they call it a contractile ring, this picture. <laughs> I should have found a different picture, I guess. But you'll notice that the nuclear envelope is starting to reappear and, uh, and the spindle is kind of starting to go away. And uh, eventually it's going to, cytokinesis is going to take place next. And I don't think I included that cytokinesis, but we've talked about that. Remember, that's the actual division of the cytoplasm, and it's a key feature. And uh, and again, in, in plants, that cell plate divides the cytoplasm, and in animals, that cleavage furrow separates the cytoplasm. I wanted to talk to you a little bit. I forgot to mention this in class, but we, there's a little section on uh, how bacteria reproduce, and so I want to mention that a little bit to you here. Uh, it kind of talks about how... It's called binary fission, by the way. Binary fission. And um, a couple things I want to mention about it. It talks about in your book about the origin of replication. So this chromosome, remember, they don't, they don't go through all the phases of, of mitosis like uh, eukaryotic cells do. But they have these origins of replication. And what happens, they kind of start on either end. And I was trying to find a picture that showed it, but this is the best thing I could do. But um, <laughs> these origins of replication start on either end. And it just starts to copy all this chromosome. And uh, as it's copying it, they kind of start to grow away from each other. And uh, they go to opposite ends of their cells. And eventually, they just divide into two new cells. And um, it's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, you can read about it in your book. Hopefully, you have. And uh, the picture on page 227 in the left-hand column is really a good. It goes to, takes you through four steps. 
and it's a really good way of uh, understanding what's going on with that. Again, it's called binary fission. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit again about the mechanism for um, the, the cell cycle control system. Remember there are checkpoints throughout the whole cell cycle. The first checkpoint is, and they call it also the restriction point, it's the G1 phase. If a cell gets the clear, uh, all clear signal to G1 phase, it will usually go ahead and complete the cell cycle to go through G2 and the mitotic phase. Uh, but if it does not get a go ahead here, it will actually enter in what we call the G0 phase. And again, remember a lot of your cells in your bodies are in the G0 phase, your nervous system cells, your muscle cells, and they're not, they're not actively dividing cells. They're kind of mature cells that really the only time a lot of the cells that are in that G0 phase that they ever actually will leave it is if there's been some type of injury. And uh, then sometimes they can, they can go in and repair themselves. That's like with the liver. A lot of your uh, nervous system cells, uh, they can't. There's not a lot of that can happen if those get injured or damaged. So, but anyway, that's the. And, and again, there's a couple other checkpoints: the G2 phase and the in the uh, M phase. But the man, that main one we, we talked about is that G1 phase. That's probably the most important one. <sighs> I gotta pick up the pace here a little bit. Run out of time. Protein kinases. Real quick, I wanted to try to explain this to you again. Um, if you remember, these protein kinases are enzymes that can activate or inactivate other proteins. And um, there's a particular one in our bodies that, are, that, that cause the go-ahead signals for the G1 and the G2 checkpoints. And if you remember this picture in your book, it's on page uh, 230, these um, protein kinases are associated with cyclins. And these cyclins, what they do is they will actually attach to the protein kinases and we call them the CDKs, the cyclin-dependent kinases. And the CDKs, a certain type of CDK is this MPF, um, I think it's it called it a, uh, what did it call it, an MPF factor, that's what it, uh, MPF, that the, it stands for maturation promoting factor, but again, a good way to think about it, it says in your book, is the M phase promoting factor, because they kind of trigger the mito mitotic phase to begin. Uh, but as that MPF, as the cyclin starts to increase in your cell, that MPF is going to increase and it's going to trigger that mitosis to take place. Um, so they play a big role in the, how, the, how they affect each other. Now what causes them to shut down, remember it says in your book during anaphase, let me read this to you again. It says the MPF helps switch itself off by initiating a process that leads to the destruction of its own cyclin. So it causes that cyclin to, that MPF, triggers that cyclin to kind of drop in, in its uh, concentration there. And uh, when it does that, the whole thing just kind of falls off. And But it's going to go back, and so it's going to start the G1 phase then, and you go to G1, S, G2, and then as it starts to build, again, it's going to be climax up there at that M phase and trigger that mitotic division to take place. So uh, a little bit about that. I, I hope you understand. I think I've only put a... There might be, a, there's two or three questions on that. Again, your chapter, I didn't add it onto the uh, presentation here, but I want you to make sure you remember to look up that density dependent inhibition. Again, that's when cells will just fill up a space, as long as there's space, but whenever, when that space gets filled up, they will stop uh, undergoing mitosis. That's the density dependent inhibition. Also, anchors dependent. They have to be attached to a substrate in order to actually uh, divide. And again, we talked about cancer and that cancer doesn't fit into either one of those. It, it's not a density uh, dependent inhibi inhib inhibited. It means it can just keep growing and growing and growing and growing the tumors. Uh, benign tumor is one that is kind of localized. And remember the uh, malignant tum tumor is one that's affecting other organs. Um, so that's about it. And metastasis is when it kind of spreads out and goes throughout other places in your body. I am almost out of time, so that's all we're going to have for this presentation. Hopefully, uh, you got something from that, and hope you will help this help. This will help you study for the test. See you guys in class.